you know, when it comes to park bench workouts, you should really never miss a lift. You should never miss a rep. You should probably never miss a set unless something comes along, you know, illness, uh, the flu, life, you know, I'm okay with that. But bus bench workouts, they're designed that you to be repeatable. And over a 10-year period of doing lifting weights three days a week, you're going to have a pretty good engine in 10 years if you actually do the program. You drink your water, you eat appropriately. When it comes to bus bench programs, we do have a problem, though. And the problem is when my eyes go, whoa, it means that we made a mistake. Now, generally, that's all on us for starting too heavy in the beginning because bus bench programs are supposed to get you someplace. There's a movie that is nearly unwatchable except for one part. The movie is called Troy, and it's an unwatchable. It's so bad, so overdone except when Brad Pitt's in the film. And Brad Pitt uh, plays Achilles. Uh, and I got to tell you, one of the things you learn when you read the Iliad, you're supposed to learn how you act as king, warrior, and prince. Uh, the Germans used to call them Verstenspiegels. These are, these are books designed to teach a lesson, okay? Well, the lesson you're supposed to learn from Achilles is called Edite, which is kind of this search for perfection. So the nice thing about park bench workouts, and this is why I like them so much, is that you're constantly trying to look more graceful, more masterful through every workout. But with a bus bench program, when it's three weeks, here we go, load it up, let's get going, is I'm also supposed to be watching for a certain level of grace. Now, CrossFit had this concept called the slop factor where it's okay to have some crappy reps in there. I could never support that concept because everybody I talk to has never missed, never been injured on a good lift. Every person I know has always been injured on a bad lift. So one of the jobs as the coach in, in, a, in a bus bench workout is to stand back and go, this looks awful. In the big 21 program, Days one, two, and three should be, even though there's a ton of volume, still should be pretty doable. If you notice by day two, you see a single miss on day two, you stop the program because we went too heavy in the beginning. You, you, I would stop the program, regroup, and start again next Monday with even lighter weights. In fact, I would argue in the nine workouts in the Big 21 program, you probably should never miss a rep. Now, that is hard to do, I mean, but that's kind of the rule. Uh, when you're doing something like Mass Made Simple, uh, I use this concept called up to 50, where you take your body weight and you squat, and your job is to get a total number of 50 reps. Well, where should you stop? Well, I argue you stop when the reps look at all difficult, ugly, uh, unbeautiful, unmasterly. Uh, your knees start to come in, go out, come in, go out. You start to... You know, you start to roll over and uh, sponge your back out. Done. Rack it, rest. Rack and rest. Rack and rest. You could do 50 singles if you want, and I'd be actually fine with that. It would take a long, long time, but at least you won't get hurt. So I think, I think we get ourselves into that real grayish area when we talk about quality reps on a program that's designed to have an output in two weeks six weeks, whatever. And one of the problems is this. If we overshoot in the beginning, we undershoot at the end. And that's, if you talk to Marty Gallagher, he'd tell you the same thing. It's one of the hardest lessons to learn as a coach and, of course, as an athlete, is putting your ego on the shelf in the beginning and waiting for the, the fruits uh, at the end.